All right. Welcome, Toronto. We missed you. <laughs> Tampa. Uh, Tampa. We missed that. A great opportunity. We missed you guys terribly. Bobby, sit up, my man. Toronto needs to see you. <laughs> Jimmy, too. Sit up. Yes. Check, check, your, your, people, check your posture. They're oh, here just posture. for you. <laughs> yeah, this was this was rock bottom of the night for a Raptors team that everything I said about them. Is this State of the Union? Ever, yeah. State of the Union? Are you doing it? Okay. Right, this, is, this is a crisis moment. For close up, yeah. Do it right. Do it right. Get us close up. <laughs> I can't believe what's happened in this team. A team that could execute defensive game plans like nobody's business. Uh, box and one Tatum out of games. Cut off Kemba from a playoff series. I don't like. It's just hard right now. I don't know what's going on with this. Are team. you okay though? This is what I want to know. No, I'm. I'm how, bummed. How are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. How are you handling this? Like, because I'm worried about you. The we're, seeing, we're seeing an end of an era with this team, and they were a fun squad. They won, they won the most unexpected championship ever in 2019. 2010, I, or 2020, they delivered us one of the best playoff series we've seen. You know, a series that needed a crowd, looking back on it. It was so good that we needed, like, the memory of the crowd's reactions to those games. And now it's dead. Like, this team is just in shambles. I, I like I don't know what else to say, and you know Nick Nurse was kind of laughing pregame, talking about all the adjustments they were going to make, and none of them really worked. Extra wings, uh, some of the deeper bench guys, Matt Thomas, and seriously, what are we talking about here? Serge Ibaka was great in the playoffs. We all know Marc Gasol struggled immensely there, so those losses were something. Losses but, there, like it, the team's still intact, and they just aren't locked in. We know Pascal Siakam's in a different world than where he was before the contract extension and last postseason. Uh, so they have an issue on their hands. And, Jimmy, you said a couple games ago, has Nick Nurse lost that team? It might not be any fault of his own. I mean, they, they really are in a tough position being down in Tampa Bay where nobody lives, where Aaron Baines is renting a condo and, like, everybody's just kind of camped out hundreds of miles from home. And they're playing Tough. 72 straight games on the road. They're in an impossible situation. But one in five, I mean, that's just shameful. Wow. Yeah. There it is. Shameful is the word yeah, the prime minister I'll, used I'll, to I'll describe the team. Those are you to trying to watch us. We don't want you to bury the franchise. Welcome in. Sorry, we were having some technical difficulties. Those on our Celtics YouTube channel, we've fixed the glitch. So everybody is uh, loaded up here and ready to go. Once again, okay. Celtics defeat the Toronto Raptors, 126-114. Uh, we could spend the rest of the day eulogizing uh, Toronto. Right. Not just yet, rest. because there's still one bailout option, but we'll get to that later. Okay, yes, the Harden, the Harden ticket. Oh. Uh, That's but let's that let's get into the Celtics, because there was a, 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 an absolute ton of observations tonight. Uh, let's, setting the stage... Uh, for you know how the game began, obviously you guys watched it, so you're here, so you know. But obviously, no Marcus Smart, no Jeff Teague, who's out again. Um, so they had to start Tremont Waters, which we'll discuss the wisdom of that uh, decision uh, now. I guess I don't really understand. I mean, we do understand it. We was trying to get in there. You got two good guards on Toronto, and they wanted uh, Waters defense in there, so it didn't get away from them. I'll tell you what, it got Our away defense. from them. Not something it you say often. It got away. Uh, Toronto, the worst shooting team statistically in the NBA by a mile, shot about 98% in the first quarter, especially in the first six minutes there. Yeah. When, when they, they scored 20 quarters. something points in the first six seven minutes with that ridiculous, this ridiculous double big lineup with Tremont Waters in there, which we never, ever, ever, as long as we're alive, ever should see that again, right? <laughs> Double big with a little bit of small. Double big with that little dude, and oh, and the two Jasons are probably looking around like, "What are we doing here, guys?" Here's the <laughs> day. Like, like, yeah, like, give well, me some help. Guess I'll have to drop. That's, that's something you, you do when you're like five and two or something. You know? Yeah, right. You're like, but they're like, come on, Brad. You know that was that was brutal. Impressive yeah. to some degree, though. You know, go ahead, Jimmy. No, I was just gonna say, yeah, that that was a, I don't know, brutal. Brutal is a little harsh, but I guess that makes sense. The way that Toronto came out in this game, they're just hitting every single shot they took. It's like, here we go again. Here comes the league's worst defense rearing its ugly head in the first couple minutes of this game. I was ready to bash Siaka from start to finish, and I actually, and the way he started, he had a couple of shots. I was like, these guys are going to actually get a feel for things, but still this came back around uh, in the second half. But um, listen, I'm not gonna I'm not going to bash the waters starting because on this show, I've been saying I've been very anti-starting Pritchard. Not because 
I don't think he's earned a spot in that situation, especially with players out. But because I like the energy, what he brings off the bench, he, he's got like Marcus Smart type energy vibes to him. I'm not going to compare the two and say that he's at that level, but he gives you that spark. Um, he's very, I don't want to use every, every sparky. He's sparky. Yeah, I don't want to use every token white guy <laughs> adjective I can think of, but yeah, he's, sparky. Said sparky. he's crafty. He's, spar- he's gritty. He's, he's sparky. He's, he's, he's crafty. Gritty. Yeah. Yeah. He's all those things. And like tonight he was in and out of the defenses, hitting shots, making good passes. What do you have? Eight assists tonight, I think. So um, I'm fine with him coming off the bench. And, and honestly, if, if waters is the guy to start and kind of offset the Jays, then, you know, that's how it's going to be. Obviously, it's not ideal, but I'm fine with, with – I mean, the, the you can't complain about the bench production tonight. It was probably the best bench production you're going to get for the entire freaking season. Well, so, it's the bench production because – because, oh, because But you got to flip that a little bit. It's the bench production because three of those guys should have probably been starting. Yeah, but do you Ooh. get that same production that early? Richard <laughs> over Waters and someone else over Tice, most yeah, likely. But, but, John, do you think but the Celtics are going to eliminate that double digit? They're not starters. Yeah, but and also, do you think do you think the Celtics going to eliminate a double digit deficit in that second quarter if Pritchard doesn't come in and completely change the pace of the game? I don't think there is a double digit deficit in that second quarter if you didn't start that ridiculous lineup. I don't agree with that. They made seven three pointers in eight minutes. I mean, the Celtics are going to be down regardless when when they're playing a team like that that's going off in the perimeter. But the Celtics did exactly what they're supposed to do. They nipped it in the butt, and that and that had everything to do with Pritchard. Once right Pritchard in the butt. Into the game. I don't know if you get that same sort of reaction if, if uh, someone else comes into the checks in. Or maybe the Celtics are still down by only five or it's not double digit. But I don't know if the second unit responds the way they do if Pritchard doesn't come in. I mean, he's setting up Grant. He set up Shemi for a three. Guys who have been criticizing for not being consistent. They look pretty consistent tonight. It looked like it was, a, it was just natural for him to come in and do what he did. You know what? If it's a different starting lineup, maybe, maybe Brown and Tatum don't look around and say, you know what? I have to put the onus on on my on myself tonight and, and really get get myself going early on. That's one of the biggest knocks on Jason Tatum is that it takes him, you know, a quarter and a half to really get in the groove. Well, tonight that wasn't the case. He, I think he looked around and said, all right, I got Tremont Waters. Not 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 to knock on him, but I got you know, whether it's Tice, whether it's you know Thompson. He's like, I gotta I gotta do the scoring tonight, so I'm gonna go ahead and look for my shot early on. And it was him and, and him and Brown off the off the jump. I mean. Waters is what he is. I mean, they're going to use this guy until, I guess, they literally can't until he's got to no, go. But he's a fill-in for tonight. You know, I'm missing four guys, yeah. No, I, I know, but it's like he's a fill-in, but he goes from not playing at all to starting in like you're know, down, seven, seven you're or eight down shots. You're three like, guards, though, Jimmy, if you count Kemba. That's what it takes to get Tremont Waters some, some minutes. Right. Yeah, he's not going to play on a normal night. Sunday doesn't play, Friday doesn't play, and they're on demand there too. And it's pretty exceptional what they're doing for the lack of wing and green, down three point guards here, still finding that creation. And Richard's such a big part of that. 